Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a science fiction film, The Andromeda Strain. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a teenage couple lying on a truck bed and looking up at the stars. The boy points to the constellations in the sky. Moments later, a comet falls down from the sky and lands a few meters away. The girl is scared, but the boy decides that they will take the projectile with them back into town. After they leave, a team of military soldiers arrives with the intent to collect the mysterious projectile. However, they discover that it's already gone. They drive to the nearby town and see that the people there have all fallen mysteriously sick. Meanwhile, a doctor named Jeremy arrives at his estranged wife's house. They had a messy divorce, and she won custody of their teenage son. However, the ex-wife is becoming increasingly unstable, and Jeremy is concerned that she isn't a fit parent. So he arranges for his son to stay with his sister in the meantime. But the ex-wife is angry and threatens to fight him once again in court. Their argument is interrupted by an arriving team of government agents who inform Jeremy that he is needed urgently. The director is apprised of the developing situation. He informs the president about the mysterious viral outbreak. General Shady is in charge of solving the problem, so he activates the program Wildfire, which involves five top scientists that will form a team to counter any bioterror attack against the United States. One of the scientists is Jeremy. The government agents begin collecting other scientists like Choi. They also go to Dr. Barton's house to get her. Before she goes, she whispers to her husband that if she calls him and says their agreed upon phrase, this means that he needs to take their children out of the US as soon as possible. The last member of the team, a woman named Angela, is greeted by Jeremy when she boards an airplane. The two already know each other, and Angela shares her sympathies for Jeremy's divorce. Meanwhile, a reporter catches wind of the viral outbreak that's being desperately covered up by the government. He watches a video of the town where the outbreak originated and decides that he will keep on chasing the story. The reporter calls Jeremy's ex-wife and hounds her for details on where Jeremy is. She angrily snaps at him and ends the call. The team finally gathers together and is briefed about the situation. They are joined by the Major, a military man with a background in infectious diseases, and General Shady, who will lead the team. He tells them that a satellite landed in a small town, and it has infected all the people living there. Their first mission is to retrieve the satellite so they can examine it. Jeremy and the two teammates dress up in biohazard suits before venturing inside the town. They discover that all the people are now dead, but curiously, the birds around town are still alive. On the other side, the reporter enters his workplace and is chided by his boss for not sticking to their agreement that he would go in rehab. But the reporter insists that he is on the verge of uncovering the government conspiracy around the Andromeda strain, the mysterious virus killing people. He requests a crew from his boss to help him find more information. The boss reluctantly agrees and gives him one week to accomplish this. Back in the town, the three doctors examine the corpses. At first, they thought the deaths were the result of asphyxiation or heart attack. But on closer look, they see bulging red veins all over the bodies and blood leaking out of them. They go further into town and track down the satellite inside a room with more corpses. The circular object is the same projectile found by the two teenagers shown at the beginning of the film. They grab the satellite so they can take it back to their headquarters. Meanwhile, a man on a motorcycle approaches the town limits. A police officer stops him and kills the man in cold blood. The officer grabs the man's phone and sees that he's been talking to the reporter. The doctors go inside a store with dead bodies sprawled on the floor. They watch the security footage and see that the man beheaded himself. The doctors also find two survivors, a baby and an old man. When they get back from their expedition, Jeremy leads Angela and the Major into the secret laboratory they will be using. But first, they have to undergo a rigorous process of disinfection and cleaning to make sure they don't bring any contaminants inside. The president storms inside the meeting room and demands to know why the director is initiating a program that would involve launching a nuclear weapon at the town to irradiate the virus. The director explains that the program has been in place for decades to prepare for this exact eventuality. But the president is reluctant to greenlight the plan because it would involve potentially dangerous nuclear weapons. He insists that they let Jeremy try and solve the outbreak first before they resort to the program. But the director is keen to use the nuclear option, so he orders that the communication system between the laboratory and the White House be taken down. Meanwhile, the doctors examine the satellite. They discover that the satellite was originally designed to go into space and capture a foreign specimen. It must have captured the virus, and when it landed on Earth and the townspeople opened it, the virus escaped. They also discover that the virus is airborne and very lethal. 
The team begins to disagree on what they will do next. The Major is advocating for a nuclear strike, but Jeremy and the others agree that they should do as much research as possible to help the president make the right decision. The reporter tries to interview a soldier assigned to safeguard the town. The soldier vehemently denies that anything serious is going on. He explains that they are just doing a military exercise. Dr. Barton and the Major extract a sample of the virus and test it out on a monkey locked inside a glass cage. The monkey immediately dies upon exposure. The old man wakes up and Angela tries to get his medical history. He recalls standing in a gas station when the virus first hit the town. One by one, the people all collapse and writhe on the ground. His own wife poured oil all over her body and set fire to herself. For some reason, the old man was not infected. It turns out that he was taking medication that acted as immunity against the virus. When the virus hits the bloodstream, it quickly coagulates the blood and causes the death of the infected through a blood clot. Angela also examines the baby. The team comes to the conclusion that both the old man and the baby must have acidic blood that prevents blood clots, which would explain why they both survived the virus. Those who managed to stay alive despite the blood clot were driven insane and killed themselves, like the old man's wife and the man in the store. The reporter coverly calls Jeremy to trade information regarding the military operation. He tells Jeremy that the military is preparing for some kind of attack, while Jeremy shares that there is a deadly airborne virus going around. He warns the reporter that exposure is extremely lethal. The reporter further discovers that General Shady's aide directly orders the assassinations of all people who are at risk of exposing the conspiracy about the virus. While he is in the military outpost, he witnesses the virus spreading around. He is also being tailed by General Shady's aide and his men. He narrowly avoids an assassination as he runs around the outpost searching for answers. Jeremy and the rest of the team confront General Shady about the military operation. He confesses that the government launched the satellite into space in order to investigate a wormhole that had mysteriously appeared. The satellite was made to collect biological samples. However, after it collected foreign specimens, the satellite malfunctioned and crashed into Earth. When the townspeople found the satellite and opened it, the virus was released. With the virus continuing to spread, the president resorts to ordering a nuclear strike on the town to eradicate the virus. They commission a female fighter pilot to deploy the nuclear weapon from a jet. But the doctors come to the conclusion that the nuclear strike would do nothing to eliminate the virus. In fact, it would only make the virus stronger by mutating it. They hurriedly try to inform the president about this, and he calls off the airstrike just before the pilot deploys the bomb. But the jet begins to malfunction, and the plastic parts of the jet melt into the air. The missile is reactivated, and the bomb is launched and hits the town. In the aftermath of the nuclear weapon being detonated, the president's team is scrambling to craft a response to the explosion. Many media outlets are already covering the event, and the president has to explain things quickly. Back in the laboratory, the team views the last minutes of the footage of the fighter pilot. Dr. Barton theorizes that the virus must have mutated and was carried through the smoke and up in the air. The virus then clung to the jet and caused the plastic parts to disintegrate. Near the explosion site, many soldiers fall ill and die. The president holds a press conference and admits that a nuclear weapon was detonated. However, he assures the public that they are safe. Meanwhile, the reporter's boss calls the director and threatens to leak photos of the military operation if his reporter doesn't appear soon. It's revealed that the reporter has been missing ever since he snuck around the military outpost, looking for more information about the virus. Jeremy reports to General Shady that the virus has mutated again. It is using birds as its hosts, furthering the spreading of the infection at an unprecedented rate. The reporter is handcuffed to a gurney by General Shady's aide. He threatens that if the aide makes him disappear, more and more people will want to uncover the conspiracy due to him being a public personality. But the aide is unmoved. He shows the reporter pictures taken of him buying drugs from a man in an alley, and he comments that he overestimates his own credibility. Several soldiers grab the reporter and deposit him on a helicopter. A black bag is also placed inside. While they're in the air, the reporter breaks open a fire extinguisher and fills the helicopter with white smoke. The pilot has no choice but to land. Due to the commotion, the reporter is able to escape and run out of the helicopter. The soldiers try to shoot at him, but it turns out there is a bomb inside the bag, and it explodes, killing the soldiers. Meanwhile, the doctors re-examine the virus cellular structure. Jeremy suggests that an alien species specifically used the virus as a messenger to Earth. The Major alternatively adds that maybe the virus is the message and the alien species wants the humans to die. Later on, the group splits into two. Jeremy and Angela hatch out their past. 
It is revealed that they had an affair when they were working together on a project before. Jeremy admits that he was wrong for breaking things off with her and going back to his wife. He loved Angela and he wishes he had chosen her. Meanwhile, Dr. Barton and the Major are examining their specimen. She asks the Major if he has someone in his life, and he alludes that he is gay. Afterward, he discovers that the virus cell structure is sulfuric. In another part of the lab, Choi is working on another sample. He calls Jeremy and shows him that this sample is replicating how the other sample is mutating. This raises the question of whether or not the virus is conscious and can communicate with its various parts. The Major is not convinced about this theory. However, they are quite sure that the virus is being propelled by natural forces, like the movement of animals. There is an impending storm sweeping across the coast, and they predict that it will bring the virus into more areas. Several miles away from the blast radius, a couple is packing up their stuff after they camped in the wilderness. The boyfriend pees in a nearby bush, and an infected squirrel bites him. This causes him to be violent, and he also attacks the car where his girlfriend is. The girlfriend gets scared and drives away. Dr. Barton calls her husband and tells him their agreed-upon phrase. The husband is disturbed, and he asks her if everything is okay. She reiterates that she wants him to take their children and get out of the country immediately. The aide calls the boss of the reporter and informs him that the reporter is already dead. What they don't know is that the reporter is still very much alive and is walking around the wilderness under the sweltering heat of the sun. He is now tired from all walking and begins begging God to save him in return for being silver. Moments later, the girlfriend drives past where the reporter is. Back in the wilderness, a crow lands on the now-dead boyfriend's body and starts feasting on his flesh. The team examines the compartment that contained the virus inside the satellite. The compartment is made of a certain type of bacteria that can consume the virus because of its sulfuric structure. Embedded in the container is a binary code with a series of numbers. The binary code is easily understandable by humans and is commonly used in the military. With these in mind, the doctors come up with the idea that maybe someone from the future sent the virus along with the solution to Earth through the wormhole, with the intention to provide humans with the solution to prevent the spread of the virus. The team also begins to replicate the bacteria in large vats, so it could be quickly distributed across the country and eradicate the virus. Jeremy replays the footage of the fighter pilot again. He surmises that since the virus is self-aware, maybe it's also taking precautions for survival. He believes that the virus attacked the jet and forced it to detonate so that it would mutate and be even stronger. The team decides to destroy all the remaining samples of the virus they have so they wouldn't be able to communicate with each other. But the director wants to keep one sample for himself for further use as military weapons. He learns that Dr. Barton had told her husband to take their children and leave. He corners her husband and blackmails Dr. Barton by ordering her to take one sample for him. When Dr. Barton tries to open the container holding the virus, the container starts disintegrating. This triggers a containment breach alarm in the lab and initiates a self-destruct sequence. Unfortunately, Choi has epilepsy that is triggered by flashing lights. The flashing lights accompanying the alarm trigger an episode and cause him to accidentally destroy the self-destruct panel. With the virus spreading all over the lab, the elevators are deactivated too. The Major has no choice but to cross the lab by climbing through the pipes. But the virus disintegrates the pipes, and the Major falls down a pool of radioactive water. Choi decides to sacrifice himself by wading into the water too and cutting off the Major's thumb because it is needed to stop the self-destruct mechanism. He hands the thumb to Jeremy before he dies. Angela guides Jeremy as he places the thumb on the screen to deactivate the self-destruct mechanism. General Shady and other soldiers disperse the bacteria in liquid form by spraying it all over the city using helicopters. In that way, they successfully eradicate the virus. In the aftermath of the outbreak, the team holds a funeral for Choi and the Major. The reporter also survives and attends the funeral. He even gets to interview Jeremy about the whole fiasco. The government orders the assassination of General Shady and his aide for their part in the Black Ops operation that resulted in the disaster. Unbeknownst to them, the director has managed to save one last remaining sample of the virus. The virus is inserted into a familiar compartment bearing the same binary code, numbers, and symbol as the one found inside the satellite. The movie ends with the revelation that the sample is being saved inside a space station orbiting outside Earth. This implies that the events of the outbreak may be one endless loop, since the sample in the space station could be the one that will cause the future outbreak which will prompt people in the future to send back the sample of the virus to Earth for eradication. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.